I'm very much honored to be the first uh, speaker. And um, um, but I read that this marked the um, the 20th, 20th anniversary of um, uh, Latin Eleton, uh, Volume One, and that's a book that I really like a lot. And that's also my kind of my first ac encounter with the work of uh, Berner. And then afterward, I have studied with Berner and worked with Berner for many years. Um, so that was a, a strange uh, um, information for me because in Germany, like um, when there's a kind of anniversary, then you will give um, a talk to praise your, your 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 professor, to admire his work. But I don't think that this is so English because it it, it will be considered to be a little bit odd. Um, so I don't. Uh, that is the first problem I have. So <laughs> what I'm trying to do is to. Um, um, Kind of uh, con reconsider uh, s some one of the questions that Bernard has uh, proposed in uh, in in Technique and Time Volume Two, and to do a, um, to to, re to to start with his critique of Heidegger, and then to kind of to to have a dialogue between Bernard and uh, Stigler on the question of rhythm. Um, so this intervention in itself is not really an intervention, but rather uh, an attempt to open a question, the question of rhythm. Uh, so what role does rhythm play in uh, general organology? And if we understand general organology as a, um, as a, a, a technical program that encompasses the inorganic and the organic uh, organs as a whole, then the inorganic, namely the technical and uh, the artificial, not only brought in a new synthesis, but also uh, moderation as a new metaphysical foundation competing against hilomorphism. Hilo Simondon has uh, demonstrated this with the example of brick uh, fabrication, that we all know this example, that uh, it's no longer that the form of the mold that gives the, um, the, the um, that act on, on, on matter to, to the material to produce a, a brick. Uh, but rather, um, uh, it is a moderative operation which sets different relations into rhythm, uh, the texture of, uh, of the clay, the, wall of the, the walls of the mold, the hands of the craftsman, not to mention the interactions happening inside the clay during the process of deformation. Now, we think the conceptualization of moderization uh, being it becomes relational and operational um, with and within its milieu. In which a rhythm, a rhythm unfolds and falls being as a whole. This is not only in musical terms, but also in technical terms. We can imagine when the uh, technical exteriority is changed, the gesture interior to the living being is coordinately modified. A new rhythm emerges. Oh, sorry, I didn't explain the structure of my talk. Oh. Um, a new rhythm em emerges according to the dynamics between the interior and the exterior, and it consequently gives us space and time. And this was already described by Le Roy uh, in the second part of the gesture and speech. Um, I quote, rhythm are the creators of space and time, at least for the individual. Space and time do not enter lived experience until they are materialized with a rhythmic frame. Rhythms are also the creators of forms. So in this um, quote, I, I would like to urge your, 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 your attention to the question of the materialized, the phrase materialized within a rhythmic frame. Now the, the, figure, the figurative rhythm reflected in the relation between the moon and the Venus that is also to say, a cosmology was slowly replaced, according to Le Roi by the rhythm of the mechanical. If we consider rhythm in relation to mechanization and automization today as the consequence of a certain technical tendency, meaning the perfection of a universal technical form, we need to question the rhythm that generated by the industrial program, which em embraces this tendency, and to consider the fact that, that rhythm, which opens up the diversification of ethnic becoming based on technical tendencies and uh, functional aesthetics, 
has been overshadowed. Le Vagrohan has described this, problem, uh, this problematic rhythm. Uh, he says, uh, individuals today are inward with and conditioned by a rhythmicity that has reached a stage of almost total mechanicity as opposed to humanization. The crisis of figu uh, figu fig figuralism is the corollary of the dominance of machinism. End of quote. Simon Long, without exception, in Du Monde Existence de Jobs Technique, described this in intrusive industrial rhythm supported by uh, technical objects as a major source of alienation. So I, I, I quote from his book. With, um, the workers was placed in the presence of sessions of networks measured out by the machine's rhythm as a series of movements that left the subject on the outside. A complete technical deculturation occurred. Now, in, in the description of uh, Simon Don, um, this image of or this concept of the problematic of rhythm still exists. If you look at the, the time, for example, um, at the, um, the textile factory in the, in the 18th century, um, and not to mention that uh, the Foscount uh, company that produced iPhone in Shenzhen, they're, do doing, they're still repeating uh, what uh, Simon Don has described. Um, but there we can see that it is only a pure repetition of patterns, a pure repetition of patterns, like what we can still see uh, as in these pictures. In Techniques and Time, Volume 2, uh, Bernard Stigler has further taken up this critique from Le Roi Gouron and, and Gilbert Simondon. He confirmed with uh, Le Roi Gouron the importance of rhythm in its uh, diversification of gestures and idioms. Uh, I quote, uh, he said, this notion of an aesthetic requires a, tip, uh, a typological description of programs as rhythms, even more than as memories, end of quote. It is also this relation between rhythm and memory that deserves our special attention. And Stigler's general organology takes the question further by showing the stake of the industrialization of memory, first uh, through transportation network and now telecommunication networks. Um, <coughs> so I'm not going to read the quotes, then I'll save time, I'll leave it to you. Um, but uh, we kind of uh, pay attention to the question between rhythm and uh, memory here that you want to uh, criticize. Now, the rhythm embedded in the industrial program leads to what he calls disorientation. And it is this question that interests me the most. Uh, when one considers that the Orient is no longer the Orient, um, which I have experienced myself as Chinese, and why the Occident ceases to be the Occident when the Orient can no longer give signs uh, due to the laws of the cosmic meaning. It's a question of cosmology, again. Why we can also recognize here a very ambitious project of Bernard Stigler. If I can put it in my own terms, then I will say it is a reorientation uh, through technical programs. And it's not only because orientation is always already technical, com uh, considering the use of compass to orient. But also because technics is the, what he said, the apical double redoubling that uh, reconstituting a who and thus historiality, if not history. Uh, uh, but it is also this new possibility of becoming closely related to the technical tendency and the contingency accompanies it, that demand a reassessment of rhythm and techniques. When one considers that the technical program is no longer able to bring forth uh, diversification of rhythm, and hence the resonance of the organic and the egonic inorganic ceases to be humanization but automa automatization. In this shift, observed Le Fargouron and others, the, ryth the rhythmic question of techniques deviates from the metaphysical to the political and the pragmatic. Now what remains beyond this critique, how can one further reintroduce the question of rhythm into techniques, or in Banner's term, how can we seize the possibility uh, of this new epochal double recovery? 
Um, I would like to restart this question of the rhythm from a critique that Bernard has given to uh, right before the introduction uh, of the epochal double redoubling in Technique and Times, uh, Volume 2. He says the determining, uh, the determining technical tendencies should be seen as the implementing of a calculation that, whether as a conscious modality or not, once to determine the undermined, which appears as detemporization through speed and which manifested as modern techniques, fabricating the wood workers as much as the wood and to reduce to being ready to hand and present at hand, deprives Dasein of its hand and destroys its traditional historicity, which Heidegger believes emanates from the force of earth and blood. And after this passage, Bernard has introduced uh, the epochal double redoubling. Now, um, Stiegler has uh, correspondingly transformed the already there of Heidegger into a technical notion of the memory, which in its turn becomes a conditional possibility of Dasein's own historicity, if not authenticity. Stiegler's take on Heidegger, the hermeneutics as a critique of the later's ignorance of this functionality of techniques, is indeed very des decisive to reformulate the Zeisfrage from the forgetting of being to the forgetting of techniques. Well, I would like to dialogue with this critique of Heidegger and to differ by introducing the notion of rhythm of the later Heidegger. Indeed, the ready to hand and the present at hand have never been rhythmic for Heidegger. It is only the uh, evang evangelist of ubiquitous computing and smartity uh, today that they embrace the ready hand as the ideal rhythm of technical development. You know? So you, you, you work with, dit, uh, with a technical digital objects without noticing their existence. You know? They become totally ready to hand. That is the ideal rhythm for them. Now, in so doing, I hope to show that this notion of the rhythm from Heidegger is not only relevant to a critique of mechanization, but also important to, to like, reconsider uh, what we say the communication between logos and technique. So I use the word uh, communication in the sense of liveliness. Um, in 1972, in a short article titled Hanvu Vivon, Heidegger mentioned a collection of poems by Arthur Hanvu, to face by Henesha. It was probably the first time Heidegger talked about a poet without citing a poem. Heidegger was impressed by two letters included in this volume and was therefore motivated to write a small article later included uh, in one of his uh, collections. Heidegger wanted to pose the question at the very, very beginning, what does it mean to be a vital poet today? Heidegger immediately replied that the poet must have a certain relation with the arrival of the unknown. This relation consists of defining the role of a poet and artist after modernization, namely the development of techno science. Heidegger's reflection on Hanbu centers on two quotes to be found in his letter to, to Paul Demony, dated May, uh, 19, um, May 15, 1871. Um, so he said in, in, in Greek, uh, uh, verse and the uh, rhythm action, but the, po the but poetry no longer rhythm uh, action. It it is in advance. Now, at the first glance, this shift of the function of rhythm corresponds to the problematic of the technological developments as well as the uh, revelation of the task of poets that Heidegger has since long discussed among his writings on Herderlin, Tackle, Ricker. But what does Heidegger mean by rhythm? What is a, its a relation to poetry? And how can we appropriate it in our discussion on the general organology? Reflecting on Hamburg's letter, Heidegger asked what exactly does it mean by en avant or in voraus? Does en avant refer to time, meaning something happens before? Or does it also mean refer to something non-temporal, non-temporal? meaning the precedence of poetry over all action. The second sense of en avant also means the poetry is the already there, and it is the ground of all actions. Poetry is words that call, cause in the nearestness of the unapproachable. Heidegger then harken back to the word rhythm by asking, what does it really mean by rhythm for the ancient Greek? Then he quote, uh, 
uh, as he wrote shows um, here, he said, um, however to realize a kind of relation holds human. Uh, that's all the definition of um, he has uh, cited. So rhythm is what holds, hearten human in relations. We notice here that Heidegger replaced the Greek word hitmos with verhandness, which means relations. Verhandness comes from the verb verharten, uh, to behave, also comes from harten, with the prefix fair, signifies action. He further asked, will the saying of the poet to come build upon the structure of his relation and in so doing prepare for man a new dwelling upon the earth? Question mark. End of quote. Now the question is, why did Heidegger deliberately choose to translate rhythmus here as relations? Uh, that's a, a curious. And it is on this point of the differentiation of rhythm as relation allow us to think about the conflict and the resonance between different organs, uh, hence I propose. This holding is nothing static but the configuration in which a resonance takes place. And this question of the resonance become quite important uh, in late in Heidegger's writing on Hölderlin and some, some, some other people, out of some other poet. But what is the resonance of organs, if we want to think in this way, which overcomes the conflicts and the malfunctions and serves the individuation of the inorganic and the organic organs? On the other hand, we should also emphasize the conflicts and the incompatibility as the possibility of such a, res a resonance to happen and to proceed. So there's a kind of reintroduction of a conflict and incompatibility in the question of rhythm, in, 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 in opposite to the, uh, uh, to the proposition or the, the proposal of rhythm as ready to hand. Um, Simondon has shown that the invention of techniques depends on the re resolution of incompatib incompatibilities as much as individuation depends on the resolution of tensions, or what he called disparatio. Rhythm sets organs into resonant, resonation to bring forth something other than themselves. Something other than themselves, that is to say, to individuate. And I found, found a similar reading on rhythm by Paul uh, Valéry from anti uh, book, Critique du Rhythm, uh, Anthropologie historique du langage, being very skeptical of the use of the word rhythm, Vareli says, I quote, I have read or I have forged 20 definitions of rhythm, but I don't adopt any of them. Instead, he, he, uh, Valerie derived his own definition, which I quote, rhythm is the ensemble or succession of an act within a single transformation of energy, a single emission. So he sees rhythm as the transformation of a system that is charged of energy, which gives action in succession or in, 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 in ensemble. This status of being charged of potential is the individual of a metastable system to come. We can say it pretty in the simultaneous language. And we can read again that um, an action is put into rhythm when it depends uniquely on its start and that it converts uh, conserves certain initial re relations. It's really interesting here that we can really derive the pa parallel re reading between the question of rhythm of uh, Paul Valéry and Simondo. And rhythm is not the metric that we learn when we write poetry. Rhythm is defined more precisely, I, I quote, the movement uh, more or less hidden by which what is not yet is already, or is entirely in what it is. And if we can make a connection here, the already is also, also the en avant, the in advance. In Heidegger's uh, 1969 essay uh, to um, the question concerning art, uh, we can see that tension, this tension that uh, prepare for the, for the char discharge or the admission also stands uh, at the center of the work of art for him, uh, the central question of rhythm. Now Heidegger didn't use the word the word tension, but rather aus I understand, meaning dispute, argument, controversy. Now the question of act has to be approached from place, uh, which present to us as an aus I understand between Dasein and space. Uh, 
uh, apparently because it has an action, uh, ex excellent relationship with space that is understood, uh, understand itself in certain sense as an outside intersection with the space. But what exactly is this outside intersection? We can imme immediately find its contrast with Husserl's in the, uh, in in I under or in either uh, in I under section, since outside under section is not a unification but rather a differentiation in technique and and art. Uh, and and uh, two small notes of Heidegger, we read again that the question concerning outside under section comes up again. So I, the quote is here. A technical pro processes present with uh, enhanced uh, technical medium is not yet and will not a contention between art and technics, what is called by outside under section, who encounters who. Now, if the outside under section is desirable, comparable to the tension in the pure individual, then isn't this the very possibility of rhythm which differentiates the poet and the non poetic of an artwork? In the second note, Heidegger, in the second note of uh, Arts and Techniques, Heidegger asked um, what and how art in the age of Gestels be. He replied that art has to be art artistically designed so. In such art and in her alone, the answer is, I quote, on her own inside the event, at Heidegger's. Um, and he continues, uh, but the other meaning also means um, so the meaning of art, of work, work from bringing forth, stand in the unconsumed, let lie before. So this is kind of always going back to the question of logos. Um, now we come to the last part, I will, I will um, make it quick. Now, um, what Heidegger was trying to lay out in the question of, um, of uh, outside understanding and his uh, uh, kind of this opening um, through, um, through these relations, is also is the question of logos, called uh, Lichten. And in another, in another, in, in an, another text by Heidegger titled uh, The World, 1958, dedicated to the reading of Stefan George's poem, um, then there's um, this sentence, uh, this phrase that interests him a lot. So I re announced and sadly see where word breaks off nothing, maybe. If I have time, we, we come back to this again, but we don't have. Um, so this Lichtung in related to rhythm is clear here. The Heidegger arrived at a, a poem on stillness and where he defines rhythm. I quote, rhythm indeed doesn't mean uh, flux or flow. Rhythm is the quiet, the uh, quiescent that joins the movement of dancing and singing and so led to rest. Rhythm bestows the quiet. Um, he continues, in the song we, uh, we heard that the coincidence shows itself when we pay attention to the join. Now rhythm is, uh, he used the word fuge, a join, as well as a fugen, um, meaning a coincidence. Now what does fugen, uh, the coincidence, and fuge, a join, mean here? It is the resolution of the coincidence of the joining together of being resulting in a new direction towards the open. Now I would like to conclude by return to Banner's uh, critique of Heidegger and his take on rhythm in order to contextualize rhythm in the communication between techniques and logos. If techniques has, uh, has appropriate logos as technologos, then it seems to me very crucial to see this listen in the organizational, uh, organological dispositive for this purpose, we need to go back to what Heidegger calls the handness as a uh, rhythmus, so relation and uh, rhythm. This relation, as Bernard Stigler showed well, belongs to the cycle between the primary, secondary, and tertiary retention. And in somewhere else, I have already tried to show that one can develop a theory of the of materialization, materialization of relation, which accounts for what I call the materiality of forms. For example, writing puts thought and the perception on paper, pulleys, wheels, and chains concretize imaginary movement in mechanical terms. The vapor engine instant instantiates flows energy in the relation between water, fuels, pipe, and gears. This process of materialization is also a process of grammatization. Now, I, 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 I will put, just put two, two quotes by the end um, as a reference, and then we can f go to discussion. So I had a discuss to go. I have the chance to go through some of the recent writings of Banner, 
Uh, at least two, two of them. One is on your task, the material titled The Shadow of the Sublime, and another one, Ecology and General Organology, with reference to Whitehead. And the question of rhythm comes up, as it seems to me that it comes up extensively. And it seems that it is, uh, for him, is around the question of speed. Yeah. And uh, Bernard proposed to go back, to, to go beyond the Lichtum for Logos in order to put forward a new program. So I quote, um, beyond the primacy of time over space as internal sense or of space over time as umwelt constituting a sphere or a Lichtum, there lies the question of speed. And beyond this question, there are the relationship between the automatization and this automatization of automatization in the service of this automatization. How does speed, here posed also as a question of rhythm, constitutes such uh, negation or privation of automatization? Something similar also was pon pronounced in the second article. Um, in Whitehead, which regard to cosmology is no longer a question of sphere, but a process that is more precisely of dynamics, interlocks, sp spirals, that materialize regimes of speed, and where there is such a thing as infinite speed, which is that of thought, of the power to disrupt and to disautomatize, that is to change the rules. With this obscure reference to Whitehead's uh, process philosophy, it seems that Banner's take on speed is no longer a take on time, since Whitehead's process is apparently a logical process than a temporal process. Now, what will be faster than the speed of light, um, than returning to a different direction that it cannot uh, reach, light from the quietness in the midst of dancing and singing, as uh, proposed by Heidegger? Now, shouldn't then this also be a, a demitour from Tannic to Logos, in which the Logos, in the name of rhythm, becomes resistance to the technical tendency, which is no longer Tannic in its pure term, but Technologos? while these logos, considered as the possibility of rhythm, can only man manifest in the common ground of techniques. And then I will direct you to the, uh, to the title of this article. When we make silent, it starts speaking. It's the opposite of the quote of Heidegger, but with the same logic. <laughs> Thank you very much for your attention.